you can measure the pulse of the city by the rhythm of DDOT. Tell them to let you off at I-75, uh, far side. As dawn breaks, buses roll. And the journey begins. You get on the bus at 7.15 and make it to school at 7.45. Well, actually, I'm a truck driver. I'm on my way to work. I have to be there at 8 o'clock. Every morning is uh, a guy that works at the produce plant up there on Trumley and East Grand Boulevard. He gets on just about every morning. Bus driver Tony Wilkes knows their stories. That guy that just got off, he, he's been getting on for several years. Coming down to, to the same spot. He's seen a lot in the driver's seat for 20 years. His current route is the number 20 Grand Belt Line from Jefferson and Helen to Michigan and Wyoming, a route that dates back to the 1920s. But in a matter of days, it will stop running. The city says it simply can't afford it. The people that catch the Grand Belt, they mean business. I'm going to a doctor's appointment. They got somewhere to go. We spend a morning riding the line from east to west to meet the passengers whose lives will change dramatically because of the cuts. They are students like Nikita Giddings, a senior at Detroit Academy of Arts and Sciences, who rides to school every day. I would like to either be a teacher or I'm starting to like forensics because I have the class. Or a singer and possibly a novelist. Trucker James Smith, another regular, has a 45-minute ride to work and home. Like I said, I've been on this line uh, on and off for five years, and I always got to work on time. The drivers was prompt. They was always nice and courteous, and I have no complaints. Then there was 49-year-old Robert Brown. Still here striving, because I'm a sole survivor. A former chef at KFC. I cannot give out the Colonel's secret recipe chicken. I got to die with that. <laughs> He's currently out of work, but he rides to get around town and visit his mom. It's convenient for me to catch this bus, because it'll take me right to Belle Isle, East Jefferson, and I'll be right there at her home. Brown has been taking this bus since he was just nine years old. Riding through the heart of the city past glorious relics like the old Packard plant gives him pause to reflect. We keep cutting things and closing things. We ain't gonna have nothing. You know, our city is actually, is starting to be abandoned. And the mayor says that's part of the problem. The number of riders on routes like the Grand Belt have dropped off considerably. But there are still plenty of people who rely on this bus and so many others every day. Rose Arsich and Galel Troutman were both headed to doctor's appointments. Both were in disbelief to hear the Grand Belt is shutting down. What you gonna do? I mean, if you gotta go to work, you still have to go to work. You can't stop living. Oh, no. I'm so upset about it. Is there any way to prevent the line from being shut down? Nothing we can do, huh? You just can't walk from the east side to the west side. You know, that's a long walk. They don't have cars, and that's just a fact. They have to depend on the bus because that is their only means to get out the house and do what they have to do. It's a daily challenge that will now become a bigger challenge. When the cuts take effect, some riders will have a longer wait or a longer walk. Some will have to change buses two to three times. Well, I'm going to have to get on um, the Claremont then, then after I get off, get on the um, retirement. I have no choice, yeah. No choice but to roll with the changes, even though it's the end of the line. It's a sad day in Detroit, and these cuts are going to reflect that. You know, we don't hold our heads down. We Detroiters. Detroiters always come back. With the Fox Focus, I'm Robin Schwartz.